Hi, my name is Ryan Jacobs, and today I want to show you a technique I use for making a test strip for split filter printing. Now, if you don't know what split filter printing is yet, this won't be useful to you, so go check out a tutorial somewhere else on that and then come back. So I'm using a full sheet of paper here, and my magenta is all the way up, and I'm going to expose for four seconds. And then my first increment is going to be two seconds. And this is a full sheet of paper, by the way. It's not a strip. It's actually a full sheet. So I do a two second increment. And then I'm going to do another two second increment. And now my next increment is going to be three seconds. You'll see why in a little bit, but I'm going to do a three second increment here. And then I'm going to do a five second increment. And finally, I'm going to do a six second increment. And that's it. So now, I'm going to go back to the original four second exposure. That's the base exposure. But this time I'm going to do it with the yellow cranked up to 80, which is the equivalent of a zero filter. So I'm going to make the base exposure for four seconds. And then I'm going to do the same series of increments but I'm going to do vertical strips this time. So here's another two seconds. Now I'm going to do another strip for an additional two seconds. Now I'm going to do three seconds. And then five seconds. Finally, six seconds with the yellow filter. And now my test strip is ready to develop. Or more accurately, my test sheet is ready to develop because this is an entire piece of paper that I'm using for a test. So I'm going to stick it in the developer and wait for the picture to emerge. So you've probably figured out what's happening here. I'm exposing in stops rather than in time increments. So the leftmost strip of yellow is at four seconds, but then it's gonna be six seconds total, then eight seconds total, then 11 seconds total, then 16 seconds total, then 22 seconds total. And then same thing going upward, but with magenta. Starts at four seconds total, but then goes to six, eight, 11, 16, and 22. And so each strip gets one stop darker. And that way it's a really even light to dark series. And I can really tell what a little bit of time change is gonna do. So now I'm gonna take it out into the light and I'm gonna take a look. And I had to turn off the sound here because there was music playing and I don't want any copyright strikes. So I'm going to look at this in the sunlight, and you can see what's going on. I have these little squares, each of which is a different combination of magenta and yellow and time. So I've labeled it here. Uh, you can see the yellow represents the seconds of yellow. The magenta numbers represent the seconds of magenta. So the reason we're doing all this is because now we have a test strip that shows both exposure and contrast. From the lower left to the upper right, the exposure changes. From the lower right to the upper left, the contrast changes. So this strip, for example, all of these have the same exposure, but just with different contrast. And the one I like is right here. Uh, well, right in the middle of those two. So I'm gonna set my magenta for between 11 and 16 seconds. I ended up going with 13 seconds. And I really like the yellow right on 11 seconds there. So that's where the contrast is best and the exposure is best. So let's go make a print.
Right, so 13 seconds on full magenta. That's a number five filter where you can set your magenta for 200 if you're using that kind of enlarger like I'm using here. And now we're going to do 11 seconds with the yellow filter. So either a zero filter or on this enlarger, it's going to be a yellow set to 80. And I'll make my 11 second exposure. And now the whole point of doing split filter printing was that I wanted to burn just the highlights. That's actually why I chose split filter for this particular image, because there's that strip at the top where the sun is shining, and I wanted to expose the highlights for longer. So I'm going to burn just that top area of the picture. And I turn the sound on the timer on so I can hear what I'm doing, so I don't have to look at both my dodging and the timer. And now I'm also going to burn in the highlights on the cymbals on the drums, because they were really reflecting a lot of sun. So I have my burning tool here. I'm going to burn in those highlights for about four seconds. done and I'm ready to develop this print. So what's so cool about this technique is that with just one test strip I basically have a perfect first print. Really? That's all there is to it. So I know it's a lot of paper to use for a test strip, to use one full sheet of paper, but it saves you so much time. You can just see exactly where you want the exposure, exactly where you want the contrast, and then if you need to dodge and burn, you can have a pretty good sense of what you need to do. And already this first print is coming out great. By the way, I'm pretty sure I'm not the first person to ever do this. In fact, I know that people have done um, test strips in stops before. I also know that people have done this sort of um, magenta one way and yellow the other way uh, test strips. I can't say that I've seen anybody combine those two ideas, but I'm sure I'm not the first. I might be the first to put it on YouTube, though. So, <laughs> I hope you're learning from it. And then here is the final print. Came out great. So there it is, split filter test strips, or more accurately, test sheets. Hey, if you liked this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the subscribe button, and also, don't forget to like this video and leave a comment. See you next time.